We're on problem 195. And they have drawn a little bit of a grid here. Let me try to draw it as well. One, two, three. And they do the same thing the other direction. One, two, three. And they call this First Street. Oh, no, there's actually four going that direction. Let me draw that one. So there's another street like that. And they call this First Street, Second Street, Third Street, Fourth Street, and Avenue A, B, and C. And they say that this point right here, I'll do that in a different color, that point right there is x, and that point right there is y. Pat will walk from intersection x to intersection y along a route that is confined to the square grid of four streets and three avenues shown on the map. How many routes from x to y can Pat take that, that have the minimum possible length? So essentially, minimum possible length, he doesn't waste time. right? So let's think about it this way. So he could go. He could go this way. So we could think about how many different ways can he get to each point on this graph, right? So to get here, to get there, there's one way, right? One possible way. To get there, and this seems to be a very sim very similar problem to what I saw in a sim computer science exam a long, long time ago. But there's one way to get there, right? That's obvious. So how many ways are there there to get here? Well, you can view it as it's well the, you, to go from this path to this path, and this path to this path. You can sum the two ways to get there. So it's two, right? Which makes sense. You go like that, or you could go like that. How many ways are to go here? Well, there's only one way to go here, right? Likewise, only one way to go here. Now this is where it gets interesting. How many ways are there to go here, right? I can either come from there, and there's and there's only one way to get there, so that's one path. Or I could come from here, right? But there's two ways to get here. So there's two ways to get here via this path, and there's one way to get here via this path, so there are three ways to get here. So essentially, I just added the one and the two. And you think of the same logic here. How many ways are there to get there? Well, I can come via this path, and that'll be, and, to, and there's only one way to get here, so there's only one way to get from this direction. Or I could come from this direction. But there's two ways to get here. So there's two ways to come from this direction. So there's three ways to get from that direction. Right? And we can use the same logic. There's one way to get here. Right? You just go straight up. How many ways are there to get here? Well, one way to get there, three ways to get there. So there are four ways to get here. Because you can go through that one way or through these three ways. So really, how many ways are there to get here? You go three ways to there, three ways to there. And I can come from either here or here, so there are six ways. right? So how many ways to get to y? Four ways to get here, six ways to get here, six plus four, ten ways to get here. right? I could either come from one of the six ways from this direction or one of the four ways from this direction. So ten ways. And that is choice C. Next problem, 196. 196. The ratio by volume of soap to alcohol to water in a certain solution, so soap to alcohol to water, is equal to 2 to 50 to 100. The solution will be altered so that the ratio of soap to alcohol is doubled, while the ratio of soap to water is halved. So soap to alcohol will be doubled. And then the ratio, or the ratio of soap to alcohol is doubled, and the ratio of soap to water, soap to water, is halved. OK? If the altered solution will contain 100, 100 cubic centimeters of alcohol, of alcohol, alcohol, how many cubic centimeters of water will it contain? So let's think about what the new ratio is. The, the old ratio of soap to alcohol, right? The old ratio of soap to alcohol, soap to alcohol, was 2 to 50. Now they want to double this ratio, right? 
So the new ratio of soap to alcohol is going to be 4 to 50. Fair enough. Now the old ratio of soap to water was 2 to 100. 2 to 100. Now what's the new ratio of soap to water? It was going to be halved, right? So that equals soap to water. But we want to halve this ratio, so now the new ratio of soap to water is 1 to 100, right? So let's see how we can think about it. If we rewrite this, the re, if we rewrite, and let's write this as a ratio of 4 to a something. So that's the same, 1 to 100 is the same thing as 4 to 400, right? 4 to 400. So let's see if we can rewrite these ratios. So the ratio of soap to alcohol, soap to alcohol to water now becomes 4 to 50 and the ratio of soap to water is 4 to a, 4 to 400 to 400 so they give us alcohol and they want to figure out water right so what's the ratio of alcohol to, to the ratio of alcohol to water is equal to 50 to 400 and that's another way of saying 1 to 8 Right? Alcohol to water is equal to 1 to 8. Let me see if that's is 1 to 8. And they're saying that we have 100 cubic centimeters of alcohol. So how much water? So 100 over water is equal to 1 to 8. And you could even eyeball that. That's 100 over 800. So water has to be equal to 800 cubic centimeters. And that's choice E. Next question. Next question, 197. If 75 percent of a class answered the first question on a test correctly, so 75 percent, so let's say three fourths, question one correctly. Question one, 55 percent answered the second question on the test correctly. Oh, let me write it this way. Question one, 75 percent true. Question two, 55 percent. Answer the second question correctly, and 20% answered neither of the questions correctly. So three, 20%. So that's not question three. 20% neither. What percent answered both? Cor what percent answered both correctly? Okay. So three fourths answered question one correctly, and one fourth answered it incorrectly. Q one. They got it wrong, right? Now, they're telling us that 20% got neither correct. So that means that they got Q2 wrong as well. Q2 was wrong as well. And this is 20% of the entire population. So this is 1 fifth. This is 1 fifth of the entire population. So my question is, if this is 1 fifth of the entire population, what, what fraction of this population was it? Well. Of these people, the, the fraction that got it correct, got Q2 incorrect, let's write that as x. So x times 1 fourth is equal to 1 fifth. Multiply both sides by fourth, you get x is equal to 4 fifths. So what we know is since this is 1 fifth of the entire population, that of the people who got question 1 incorrect, 4 fifths also got question 2 incorrect. Right? And if you want to know what percentage that is of the whole population, multiply 1 fourth times 4 fifths, and you get 1 fifth, which is that data that they had given us. But this helps us, because this tells us of these people who got question 1 incorrect, what fraction got it right, got question 2 right? Well, 4 fifths got it wrong, 1 fifth got question 2 correct. 1 fifth got question 2 correct. All right. So now let's, let me let me just take a step back. I don't I want to make sure I'm not doing it in the slowest possible way. They told us that right, 75% got question 1 right and then 55% got question 2 right. Okay, so let's think about it. So of this, some percentage got question 2 got question 2 wrong, right? Well, actually, let's think of it this way. Of of this, some percentage got question 2 right. Let's call this I don't know, let's call this y, right? Let's call that y, and let's call this right here, let's call this, I don't know, I already used, well, I'm going to use x again. 
Let's call this x. Well, yeah, I'll use x. This is a different x. All right, so first of all, what is the total proportion of people who got question one wrong and then question two right? Well, it's 1 fourth times 1 fifth, so it's 1 twentieth of the people got question one wrong and question two right. And that's equal to x. Now, what percentage of the people got question one right and question two wrong? Well, that's going to be y, right? Now, if you think about and and y is actually y is actually what we're solving for. They want to know how many students answered both correctly, right? So, if you think about it, y plus 120, that represents all of the people who answered question two correctly, right? All the people who answered question two correctly, I know this is a little confusing, are those people and those people, right? That's all the question two is answering correctly. We already know that this is 1 20th of the population. And we know that y plus 1 20th of the population is equal to 55% of the population. So we could write that as 55 over 100, or we could divide uh, both by 5, and you get 11 over 20. This is 11 20ths of the population. So what is y? We'll subtract 1 20th from both sides. y is equal to 11 20ths minus 1 20th is equal to 10 20ths, which is equal to 1 half. So 1 half of the population got both the first and the second correct question right. And actually, we didn't even have to use, well, we did have to use this 3 fourths information to get this 1 fourth here. But anyway, and let's see if that's one of the choices. Right, D, 50%. And I'm all out of time. See you.